G'day YouTube, one of Jay here and welcome back. Alright, Sunday, Sunday, last day of the weekend and we're waiting to see what's going to happen come Monday morning with the markets. Looks like we have had a little bit of an upturn sort of here, but look, the market's still down over seven days and it could still be going down lower. We just don't know. But, you know, my hopes are still somewhat high that we're going to continue on an upward trend and we're not going to go too much lower but it is something we need to keep in mind but let's move on all right gas prices this is much better finally they've come way down to 16 i think it was up around 50 the other day uh that's hurting a bit much btc dominance has risen a little bit so maybe some people are getting a little bit more bullish into btc the market cap has uh, risen again but look, we're still a long way off, you know, that kind of 800 billion that we we're at at the peak of 2017. Uh, so we've, yeah, it's definitely still got a ways to go. So that's what makes me feel, you know, still bullish about the market is while the price of Bitcoin is close to its all time high and has kind of tipped it, the market cap isn't even there. We're still sort of, you know, not, we're a little bit over halfway, but not even sort of two thirds of the way. So yeah, if this market cap gets up to that, you know, $800 billion mark and you know, $1 trillion mark, it'll be very interesting to see what the price of Bitcoin is. All right, let's have a look at movers. What's really moved in the last 24 hours? All right, Ampleforth, Energy Web, NEM uh, has been doing really well. It's recovered most of those dips. I uh, wanted to build a position, uh, but I sort of missed it. And now it's just gone straight back up. It's not to say I can't buy, but I just don't know if I want to buy it at the moment. Elron has performed well. Quant Sushi, again, just goes from sort of strength to strength, but it is still down. It had a massive pump. Blockstack, we've got some interesting news about Blockstack coming up. And Verge as well. Verge uh, is doing well, uh, and it might have a bit to do with Pornhub and Visa and all the rest of it. So uh, we'll have a look at that very shortly. What about losses? Anyone really hurting? XRP. I think, you know, a lot of this XRP, uh, well, not a lot, but at least some of the XRP hype was driven by the uh, Flare Network Spark token airdrop. So people have got in, bought their uh, XRP to get the Flare, uh, and now they're selling off. Now, look, not everybody, don't get me wrong, but I think that's definitely what people have done. Because we can see the Flare airdrop was yesterday, uh, and it just started to uh, drop significantly. And there we can see it's still going. But look, it's also down after seven days. But much uh, the same as Stella. Uh, they both pumped uh, quite a lot. So of course there's going to be a retracement. That's just what happens. It's always like that. All right, let's move into the stories that we were having a look at. We'll check the Bitcoin chart later. So as we said, one of the bigger winners was... Uh, not. Yeah, well, I suppose it was. It was up there. It was in the top 10 movers. So Blockstack. All right, Blockstack CEO looks to build a new framework for crypto securities. Blockstack's ecosystem has gone beyond the firm that gave it life, argues CEO. Excuse me. So for those who don't know, Blockstack was the first uh, regulated securities ICO, uh, I think in sort of 2019. And this will probably explain a little bit better. Blockstack's trailblazing work with Securities and Exchange Commission on the initial coin offering for its native Stacks token has made headlines in mid 2000. Uh, sorry, made headlines in mid 2019. On Monday, Coin Telegraph reported on Blockstack's legal analysis that said upon launch, the launch of its 2.0 network next month, Stacks will be sufficiently decentralized to leave the status of a security. Blockstack itself will be rebranding to Hyro Systems to further encourage the independence of Stack tokens. So they were the first uh, ICO that I'm aware of uh, that got clarity. So, you know, all the ICOs that happened back in 2007, not all of them, but anyway, a lot of them, they ended up getting fines from the SEC and they had to pay millions of dollars. Look, don't get me wrong, it was a drop in the ocean for what a lot of these did. But Blockstacks came out and said, rightio, uh, here we are, this is what we're going to do, you know, call us the security. Uh, and now it seems like they're very close to being able to be not called a security uh, and move away from that, uh, you know, sort of status. So very interesting for Blockstack and their price has done quite well. Uh, I got into Blockstack many months ago uh, and it's done 
reasonably well. I think I've maybe sort of roughly doubled my money there. Now we'll have to wait and see if it uh, continues to go up. Uh, it's still quite cheap in the you know the dollar cents, but uh, you know whether it's still a good buy or not, you'll have to go and do your research. I like Blockstack, and I may buy some more. I'll have to do a little bit more TA on it. Uh, things are sounding promising though, which is good. And again, the real in my personal opinion, it's not financial advice, but my personal opinion is the real bull run hasn't really started yet. We have to wait for Bitcoin to really get over that $20,000 hurdle, and then the real crazy stuff is gonna to start to happen. May not happen this year, look it could, but I think maybe it's gonna come early next year now. I just think we're too close to Christmas. People, you know, take some profits, that's just generally what they do. Uh, take some time away with the families and things like that. And even, you know, big companies still do the same. They slow down over the Christmas period. They take their holidays and all the rest of it. And then sort of January, February, we might start to see things really move. Time will tell. Who knows? All right, Verge. As we saw, Verge was one of the big movers. Now, Verge, <coughs> oh, excuse me, or XVG as it's known. Uh, that's its ticker anyway. <coughs> oh, God. So XVG price gets a helping hand as Visa and MasterCard cut off Pornhub. So people obviously like to pay for uh, you know their services, uh, their subscriptions, I should say, on Pornhub and things like that. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Well, Visa and MasterCard have shut them off and said, no, we're not going to do that anymore. So what these uh, sites have done is they're acti actually accepting cryptocurrencies. So they accept Bitcoin uh, and Litecoin as well, but Verge has been kind of uh, in and around that scene for quite some time. So Verge has been uh, doing not too bad of late. I got into it a while ago. It really bit me. It was like down 30% to 40% regularly, uh, and now I'm roughly trading around about even. And I've still got a, uh, a bag of it left. I did sell some of it because it was about half of what I had because it was doing so bad and I generally don't like to do that and I generally don't do that but on this occasion I did and that may come back to sort of bite me but anyway I've still got uh, half my verge uh, and it looks like they're doing well uh, off the news that Visa and MasterCard uh, aren't allowing them those services and look we'll have to wait and see if it makes much of a difference for uh, Bitcoin and Litecoin. Verge is a much smaller market cap, so that's going to move a whole lot easier. I think they're about 98 at the moment or something like that. Let's go back and have a look. Where is Verge? So yeah, 98. So they're just inside the top 100 there. Uh, and look, a little bit of a pullback there in the last hour, but that's all right. All right, so XRP. Here it goes on to talk about why XRP has been struggling. Look, I think a lot of it is that it pumps so much. So of course there was going to be some kind of uh, retracement. Uh, and again, the whole Flare Network, Spark Airdrop and all the rest of it. I think that's really playing a part into it. Uh, and obviously XRP. So as we can see here, it had this big run up and now it's just sort of tapering off. Look, you know, hopefully it'll find support somewhere around about here. We can see there's some confluence in and around here. Uh, and then it'll just hold and we'll wait for the next kind of run. But, you know, who knows? Time will tell. Uh, and things could really start to pick up with that regulation that Brian Brooks was talking about. And that was to come in sort of six to eight weeks. And that was about a week or two ago now. So really, you know, we're kind of looking at early next year, really, uh, is when we'll probably hear about it. It's unlikely we'll hear about it over the Christmas period. But look, we might hear about it in the next sort of week or two, you know, just before Christmas. But I would be expecting more next year. And hopefully, you know, all this regulation stuff is good news for crypto because that's the way uh, Brian Armstrong sold it, that... Uh, there should be lots of good news. So that could be really good for XRP because they've been waiting on clarification for a long, long time. And look, a number of other cryptocurrencies as well might get some really good news. All right, another billionaire, Wall Street legend, has changed his tune on Bitcoin. This is happening every couple of days, every couple of weeks. For anyone who is still in the disbelief phase about Bitcoin and think, nah, it's not legit, it's not real, it's not going anywhere, what, you know, what more... Could I or other people uh, do to convince you that this is real? Hedge funds are getting in. Big businesses are getting in. You know, these legendary investors are coming out and saying, yep, this is legit and I'm getting in after calling it, you know, every name under the sun for the last, you know, few years at least, if not basically since its inception back in sort of 2009. So here we have, now after warning last month that Bitcoin could soon be outlawed, 
Ray Dalio, the legendary billionaire founder and co-chairman of the world's largest hedge fund, Bridgewater Associates, has admitted Bitcoin's now established itself as a gold-like asset alternative. So basically what happens there is he's now saying this has happened. He's already built his position. They don't provide you this news when they're about to do it. They wait until they've already done it to now... uh, you know, get other people excited. So again, only a month ago when he's saying it could be outlawed, that is when he was most likely buying it. That's the way this system works. If someone is trash talking something, now not all the time, sometimes they legitimately hate something and, you know, don't want to touch it. But now that he's come out and said it's gold-like asset alternative, it's because he's already bought into it. Uh, He would not be saying that if he hadn't have bought into it. He'd still be saying, no, I don't like it, it's terrible, uh, and then buying into it. Because you don't want to let everyone know what you're about to do. You want to let them know what's happened after you've done it. So then everyone else can FOMO in and go, oh my God, the biggest hedge fund in the world, Bridgewater Associates, has just bought Bitcoin. I'm doing the same. And they get to ride uh, the upside to that. But look, just another one, and more of them are coming. It is going to be, you know, again, Mass Mutual got in there, an insurance company. Uh, you know, they've bought Bitcoin. There's so many companies out there. You know, it's just on the up and up. But that's not to say we can't have some, uh, you know, reduction in the price in the short term. All right, Bitcoin now attracting world's deepest pool of capital. This is a huge deal. So this is going back to that sort of uh, Mass Mutual investing their money in it, into it. So here it says, speaking to express.co.uk, uh, Bitcoin pioneer Max Kaiser said, insurance company money is the most conservative and deepest pool of capital in the world. Now that Mass Mutual has made it okay for these companies to invest in Bitcoin, the floodgates have opened even wider than when they did with Paul Tudor Jones and Michael Saylor starting to put billions into Bitcoin. So again, it's all slowly but surely happening. It's, you know, that trickle, trickle, trickle. It's like when you're filling up a cup, you know. It can take a while for it to fill up, but once it's full, it just starts to overflow really, really quickly. And that's exactly what's going to happen with Bitcoin, in my personal opinion. All right, another one over here. So Bitcoin, has it broken free of the S&P 500 correlation? Uh, and what does this mean? <sighs> Look, The S&P had a bit of a uh, pullback, uh, and Bitcoin has too. So it's interesting that maybe at the time of writing this article, they felt like it really had, but I mean, you know, Bitcoin's uh, pulled back a little bit uh, in the last sort of few hours or so. It seems to be starting to make a move. And again, we can go back here uh, and confirm that. So Bitcoin was down 24 hours, it's moved up, but now it's just kind of hovering. So, you know, has it really broken away from the S&P 500? Who knows? But it does go on to talk about, uh, you know, how good it would be if we could actually break away from it. But look, this is my this is my take on it. All markets are correlated. End of story. It does not matter what market you're talking about. They are correlated. When the uh, virus pandemic came around, every single market crashed. There wasn't one that went up. Every single market crashed. What does that tell you? They are all correlated. Now there's, you know, levels of correlation, high and low and all the rest of it, but they're still correlated. If something drastic happens in the world, all markets will suffer, plain and simple. And there will be times where the S&P 500 goes down and cryptocurrencies goes up. And then there's going to be times where cryptocurrencies goes down and S&P 500 goes up. And then there's going to be times in the markets where they both do exactly the same thing. So, you know, be careful when you hear people say they're correlated, not correlated, and all the, sorry, they're not correlated. They are absolutely correlated. 100%. There is no doubt about it. Every single market in the world is correlated. It's just the level of correlation. But if something drastic happens globally, it happens to all markets. It's not, you know, just one market will suffer. It is every market will suffer. Uh, and But they'll just be varying levels of how much they're going to suffer. And then at some point, you know, again, people will panic and, you know, go, all right, gold's where we're going. So all of a sudden gold goes through the roof. And then everyone's like, no, nah, I want out of gold now. And they're off to something else, you know, Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, putting it back into oil, putting it into property, whatever it may be. But we are all correlated. Every single market is. Now, 
Bullish divergence. So TD9 buy signal aligned for new Bitcoin rally relief. The Bitcoin 4-hour price chart is seeing a bullish divergence and a TD9 buy as hopes for a, a relief rally rise. Uh, and look, again, Bitcoin has, you know, slowly made its way back up. We'll look at the chart soon, but it's still down a little bit. All right. The price of Bitcoin has rebounded strongly from sub 7,600. I was lucky I bought some Bitcoin, or, sorry, 17,600. I was lucky I got some around 17,000, I think 500 and... $5,580 or something. Uh, I wish I had to put in more. Uh, I, you know, I was waiting for it to go lower and it didn't go lower, but look, that's all right. It means I've got cash on the side for if there is, an, is another dip because it doesn't mean we're out of it yet. So, uh, yeah, rebounded strongly, strongly from 17600 to 18400 and we're up a little bit above that now. So, you know, have things changed? And we can see here that they, they've got this divergence going on. Uh, they are con conceptually similar in that they emerge after a steep correction. A bullish divergence is a technical pattern that re re revolves around the relative strength index RSI. The RSI is a momentum indicator that gauges whether an asset is overbought or oversold. The RSI has a scale of 1 to 100. Under 35 means an asset is oversold and over 75 means an asset is overbought. If the RSI drops below 35 and it begins to recover uh, with an asset, a bullish divergence emerges, so we can see there. Scott Melker, a cryptocurrency trader, said the four-hour price chart of Bitcoin showed a bullish divergence as the price recovered above 18100 So look, we'll have to wait and see. Let's go over to the chart itself. Here we are. Now, this is the daily chart. Uh, I don't use the 15-minute charts and the hourly charts too often. It's not to say I never use them and I never look at them, but I like the bigger time frames. And again, to even scale out, let's have a look. So we can see this is where we were, you know, again, sort of the end of uh, November, uh, and then we had a correction. We came up and tipped it again, this, you know, green sort of line that we need to get over to break all-time highs, and we've just been fluctuating under it. Now, we've had a bit of a pump up, but are we going to have another sell-off and continue to go lower? And again, maybe test this 17,200, maybe even come back down uh, and retest this 16,200. That is what we're waiting to see. But there has been a weekend sell-off. And so again, Thursday, Friday, Saturday pumped. Now we've got Sunday uh, and you know we're waiting for Monday to come. Will we start to move higher or will we just continue on this downtrend? Because we do have a downtrend at the moment. This is basically what's going on. And we can see it is, it's testing this, but keeps going lower. So we're waiting to see if this is going to break out to the upside. And even if it does, it could be a fake out like these, you know, a bit of a fake out and then rolled over straight away. So, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. It is uh, completely within the realms that we do uh, roll over and come back down and test these support levels uh, or resistance levels, depending on how you want to look at it. But I think it's really unlikely that we come back down to here. And again, we looked at the uh, the moving averages, the 50, the 100, and the 200. 200 uh, is down around the $11,000 mark, 11800 I think this is where the 200-day moving average is. So it is possible that we come down here unlikely the 100 day moving average very interestingly is now sitting around about this kind of fourteen thousand dollar mark so that is the one that's kind of more likely if it's going to have a real correction but the 50 day moving average i think is down and sort of around about here so this is where really i'd expect it to kind of bounce off at the moment again micro strategy we spoke about it the other day they raised another 650 million dollars uh, to buy more bitcoin Grayscale are still buying. There's a whole stack of institutions out there still buying. So I just don't see any heavy corrections coming in the near future. My personal opinion, though, not financial advice. You've got to make up your own mind and do your own research. All right, well, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hit that like and subscribe button down below. I'll put out daily content every now and then. I may miss a day, but that's because of work or something like that or family. Things get in the way. But 99% of the time, I have a daily video. All right. Again, stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that game train and I'll see you next time.